will be revised and adapted to the circumstances. The professional, process, the professional project describes the actions that will be developed in the work plan to achieve the objectives identified in the reception phase. Thirdly, we implement the actions addressed in the work plan as a part of a training process. There are different types of actions, like training actions linked to the secondary school curriculum, training actions with certificate of professionalism, dual training in companies, training actions in soft skills, tailor-made trainings according to specialization or territorial needs, specific training actions to improve employability, community projects with business collaboration. These actions are developed collectively with other pairs or individuality. The whole process is carried out with an active involvement and monitoring by a reference tutor. Fourthly, after the young person undertakes their training and achieves the objective set by the work plan, he or she then enters a period of at last four months of transition to either a work plan or return to formal training. This transition process consists, on the other hand, on coordination actions between the tutors from LOPON with the workplace or the educational training educational center that the youngster, the youngster wishes to move into. Coordinating actions involve sharing information and defining support adaptations. The key aspect is that even though the youngster is transiting to external resources, the tutor from LOPOR training center remains the person of reference and support for the youngster during the whole process. The transition process for persons with disabilities involves a variety of coordination actions. In the case of the students with disability aiming to access a workplace, coordination actions involve assessment of areas of improvement and adaptation, in situ work on a competence improvement, and application of working with support methodologies. In the case of the students with disabilities, aiming to return to formal education, coordination actions involve curricular adaptation, agreed tutorial sessions, competence assessments, and proposals for continuous improvement. On the other hand, during the transition process, the tutor continues to carry out regular tutoring sessions, aiming to provide regular support in the daily life of the youngsters with disabilities and promote their autonomy. When the tutor considers that the young person has sufficient autonomy, a closing session is held. In general, youngsters with disabilities follow the same process mentioned as the other young people. But in order to ensure that the success of the, pro of the process, additional actions are carried out. These actions are developed by what we call diversity commission. This commission works to ensure that all young youngsters, especially youngsters with disabilities, can carry out all projects and trainings appropriately. It also develops strategies to approach them to the community and develop strategies to promote and ensure inclusion and, in addition, provides orientation and support on inclusion to the staff involved in the training process. The work developed by the Commission is based on taking into consideration the individual interests and motivations of the youngsters, applying more intensity in the accompanying process, considering the family as a basic, a basic social unit of intervention, paying special attention to emotional education and socialization process. And finally, being flexible with the different needs and contexts. The ground methodology of training process is work by project. 
we use work project as a key tool to develop the necessary competencies of each young person and thus respond to the diversity that exists in the classroom. The methodology is characterized by its flexibly, flexibility and adaptability to each young person individuality, taking into account his needs and social context. This allows different profiles of youngsters to work together in the same projects. Thanks to this peer-to-peer -peer approach, we increase inclusion. In order to carry out all the work, it's necessary to build a strong network with the different agents in the territory. They must contribute to the recruitment and derivation of the young people to services and promote their involvement in the community. An example are collaborating centers, local authorities, more than 100 companies and entrepreneurs, regional services, residential care centers and reception centers, reception center for non-accompanied young migrants, and the government of Catalonia. Last but not least, which do we consider our, are our case of success? First, we involve, involve the local community in the learning process of the youngsters. Our projects are developed in collaboration with a variety of local actors which offer learning opportunities such as visits to local enterprises, active participation in the local cultural activities, and mentoring and volunteering actions. Secondly, we coordinate with the different derivate agents, such as social services, high schools, local, con local councils. Thirdly, all projects and practices are developed with the aim to be innovative and replicable in a variety of, of contexts. And finally, the main characteristics of all practices is that the evaluation indicators are personalized to the needs and the characteristics of each student. Finally, I want to present Tolly. Tolly is a youngster with an intellectual disability and a very fragile family situation. He is a student in a Lopon training center. He was derivated as from his previous high school because he faced a lot of difficulties to finish compulsory secondary education. He has difficulties in social designs and establishing healthy relationships. He lives in a residential care facility. And this is his story. I was able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot
So that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, very on time as well, which is great. Um, we just have maybe take uh, five minutes now for questions. Does anybody have a question? Maybe you can just uh, comment in the chat and then uh, I can unmute you. Maybe in the meantime, I can ask a question. You talked about how you obviously work with a lot of different stakeholders uh, to be able to deliver this service. Maybe you could go into a little bit more detail. How do you work with education providers? How have you approached them to, to work in this? Is it just in the special schools or also in mainstream schools? No, um, we, we work in, a, we have a, a school and all the professors um, are welcoming in the school. We have different kinds of, with different types of, of, of profiles of youngsters, mm -hmm. and most of them are derivated from a special schools. Mm -hmm. We have a relationship with different agents, and one of them are special schools. Mm -hmm. So when a special schools, how to know uh, to to do another phase to these young for these youngsters, and they put in contact with us, and we work together to um, to to training mm -hmm. and to enforce these these youngsters and make this transition to 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 involve to the training center to another training center in a regulated education or in a workplace mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so just a question from the chat um these youngsters they come just from that school or is there any other um other services or systems through which these children are identified to you as as needing your support in this um yeah these youngsters um normally uh, um, are derivated from high schools but we have a lot of um derivations and um, for the um, centers for example special schools sometimes social services they they derivate us and a lot on local councils there are a lot of kind of derivations and for example then residential um cares but they, these youngsters um, has um, are um, 16 years old, so um, they are not in the regulated education. So because in regulated education in Catalonia or in Spain and um, finishes at 16 years old, so and they finish the, this regular education without not um, certificate, and sometimes um, they cannot to access to another training center or to another workplace because they don't have an, uh, a work, a, a certificate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you find the reception of local employers? Do you have a good collaboration with, with them? Has it led to a successful long-term employment of um, persons with disabilities in, in paid employment? And have you, is there specific sectors that uh, are more open to employing persons with disabilities? Have you had to adjust your your um, your service depending on those um, sectors who are more open to the employment of, of persons with disabilities? In the reception phase, in the reception phase, and the reception phase, it it, it takes more or less a, a duration of one 
two weeks, depends on the youngsters. Sometimes, uh, depends on the, young, the youngsters need more and need less, but the standard is two weeks. And um, in the case of the youngsters with disabilities, sometimes it's more. But in this period, we're trying to find um, their motivations uh, with, work in, work, with working with them individuality, with tutorial sessions, and also we work with um, projects which involve the community and a little bit tailor, tailor made for, for explore and to, 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 and, and to know how they want, what are their motivations and, and what they interest, because some of them, they don't know what they want. And in the first, in the first phase, that the reception phase, we try to explore that. So the, it's, it's the student who says, this is what I want to do. And then from that, you reach out to employers and then work with the employers. Yeah. For example, if the student wants to, to be, like Tolly, a gardener, because we, we explore different kinds of, of, of profession. And we know that gardening, he feels happy to do in that. And we, we could find a, a training to practice and to 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 have a certificate of gardening mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so um it depends on the youngster it depends on the motivations and this this gardening for example this gardening and training um abroad, uh, they would they do with the other youngsters that not don't have um disability so there are a mix with youngsters with disability and not and yes, we have a special attention with people with disabilities in the program. And, and diversity commission um, revised all the projects and all the, the trainings that the young people who has disability uh, could do, can do these trainings mm -hmm. and work to find these adaptations in the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um this, this uh, project that you have going on now, is it now considered to be part of the formal vocational and education system or are you financed as a separate project? We have different kinds of trainings. There are some are regulated educational from the government of, of the Catalonia, uh, educational system, and there are others from the um, ser, ser profession, more professional professionals from the occupational and uh, the occupational government of Catalonia, or the, the occupational department, sorry, mm -hmm. of Catalonia. There are two kinds of, um, of trainings. All of them are recognized by the government of Catalonia and it's a certificate mm -hmm. that they can work with the, 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 the title, so with the certificate. Okay, thank you very much. I think we have to stop there and we have to- and, Sorry, and, huh? and <laughs> a little bit. And all of the trainings uh, have an interpartnership with uh, companies. So this is process with the partnership and youngsters can explore in more deeply the, the, wor the, the workplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have a special contact with the, part with the companies and because more of them wanted uh, to collaborate with us and, and some of them are interested to contract them. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. We have to stop there and move on uh, to Katri. But thank you very much for your, uh, you. your presentation. And if you're happy, we'll share that with the participants after the workshop. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So Katri, I don't know if you want to turn on your sound and your video. There you go, perfect. And then I'll leave it over to you. Sorry for this technique. <laughs> Can it be seen now? Or do you see my notes also at the moment? I see your notes as well. You see my notes also. Yeah. Okay. Then Maybe it's not how you right. explained it last time. Yeah. Yeah. It's better. Okay. 
now it should be right no no i don't know why no. there's really some some technical problems with me i'm so sorry for that if you want i can share it on my screen and you can tell me when to flick through so you can show your notes have you made any changes since the last one mm, i have one okay. one extra slide in that uh, I, I, I try another. Okay. Just, just a moment. I hope it's now working. If not, then. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you. And sorry for this. I hope my voice is, you can, you can hear it because we had also some voice problems in the beginning, but I, I try to speak quite slowly. But good afternoon for everyone. I am Katri Hanninen from the KVPS, from Service Foundation for People with an Intellectual Disability. So I am I'm from Finland. Uh, in this workshop, I will tell you about our transition training for, for youngsters, for young people. And the name of the training is On the Verge of the Adulthood. It means, the name, name means that uh, those people who are involved in the training are starting to leave the childhood behind and planning for the future. They may live at home with the, with the parents, but they are starting to think that what, what can it be after the school? And it's, it's really an important step for them. And uh, we think that they really need support for that so that they can find out what's, what's the life after the school and maybe after moving away from home. The KVPS is an NGO. Uh, we are working for a good life. I don't know that maybe someone who know, knows us, but just a few words about, about the KVPS. So we are a nationwide service provider and, um, and an NGO that is aiming to promote equal opportunities for people with special needs or for people with an intellectual disabilities and also their families. We are, um, we are a family-based organization so for us, it is really important to involve also the families in all our activities. Then about the, about the training program on the Verge of the Adulthood project. It's a training program for young persons with disabilities and for those persons who are in the transition phase from secondary education to the next phase of life. For example, to the, to the studies, to study more or to the employment. Normally the youngsters are aged from 13 to 25. But of course we try to find, uh, uh, we try to start quite early. So maybe the 25 is quite old, I can say. And also, as I said, we are always involved the family members in our different kind of processes. The KVPS, us, uh, we coordinate the local processes and also gather all the key stakeholders like uh, municipalities, the local NGOs, different schools, vocational studies and, uh, and different kind of service providers to support the youngsters and their families. Our role is to try to find out all the, all the roles that are, are involved in the, in the youngsters' lives and try to get them all together. To, to sit down and, um, and think about the youngsters' lives and also to support the whole family. Uh, I think the main, main point of our training program is the holistic approach. It's really essential in, the, in this, this kind of phase. Many young people and, uh, and also their families lack support. They don't feel that they, they get support enough or they feel that the support that they get is not, not the right kind of support. There's many, many services that they can, they can use and they can, they can have from the municipalities, but there isn't a person who is really uh, taking care of all, all this and thinking, thinking, thinking this everything like holistic. Uh, even that the, um, we have quite a big role as an organization, the KVPS. Of course, it's 
he doesn't have to say, but of course the young young persons who are involved in the process, they are the main main persons. They are really leading the process that we help them to get all, all together. We also um, think quite many things, not only only about the studying or, or the employment or housing. We try to find out everything that is involved in the in the youngsters' life. They can also um, we try to find out how to make choices. As Judith also said, that it's not so easy always start to think about your life and make, make choices of your life. About relationships with the family members, but with the friends, with the, with the schoolmates, with the, with the people who support them. About the independent living, it's really a big issue in this, this age. And also the housing opportunities. But the studies and employment, it's uh, quite often the housing and studies or employment are those big goals in the youngsters' lives. And also the laser time is really important to get, get in this process. process. As you can see from the picture, I'm, I'm sorry that the words in this picture, they are in, in Finnish, so you can you can't maybe understand what's, what is written in that one, but um, it wants to show you that uh, it's there's so many things that people have to think about when they start to think about their future. It's um, they they really think that um, there's so so many big 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 uh, topics, and you really have to sit down and think about one by one. If you try to find out every everything, all the goals at the same time, it's not not even possible. So it's really important that there is a, a coordinator that assembles the puzzle, puts all the, all the pieces of the puzzle together. So they have to be the committed local partners and the networks. Sometimes it's, it's not so easy, easy to find them, to find out who are those in different communities. The positive approach is also a big issue in this training program. Those families and those youngsters, they are used to, to hear um, many things that are wrong in their lives are many things that they need to support and many things that they, they can't do. But it's really important to keep the positive approach and keep, keep, the, um, keep the plans, keep the dreams going. Of course, young person's own wishes and dreams, they are guiding, guiding the whole process. And I think that's a big role for us to really let them be the main uh, the main points in the process that we really uh, remember to keep them to be the guide. The person-centered planning is one of the, the main points. We really uh, stop in the one person's life and, and use those different kind of person-centered tools and make concrete plans for the future. And again, local committed change makers. And um, this training is a uh, done in the, in the groups of 10 to 15 youngsters and, and the peer support also for the young people, but also for the family members, for the parents and for the siblings. It's really important. And we use a lot of experts by experience, people who come comes to those meetings and tells that, okay, I have been in the same situation, but we have solved it. And now my life is, is like I wanted it to be. Here's some examples of the tools that we use. Some of them is uh, you can find also in English. For example, this this is how I manage guide. But some some ones are only in Finnish. Sorry for that. But we have uh, different tools for the for the youngsters and for the parents. The tools are are quite uh, quite easy to read and easy to use. They are quite simple, but they they help people to to think different kind of things. Uh, this uh, the part of my life tool. It's about uh, the young person's life. It, it starts from where you come from. And then uh, the next point is that what's happening now when you are in this, in this training, what's happening, what's, what's the situation in your life at the moment? Then uh, what kind of life I want? What, what do I expect from the future? What are my dreams? And then um, what, what is going to change? What, the, what changes are coming that I know that they are they are coming, for example, moving or the school starts or, or things like that. And then, then what kind of support do I need? 
and then the last one is what, what's my dreams and in the sun there is a good good everyday life and that's the path from the situation now to the to the life that i i really want to live for the parents there is also one uh, one toolkit where the parents can, uh, can um, handle their emotions we, as, as I have said many times, we um, we work a lot with the parents, and we think that it's really important also to handle the parents' emotions because the parents are most near of the young people, and they can support those youngsters if they are if they have uh, handled their own feelings, their own emotions. And this this on my own wings book tells about that, and there's so many many tools for this this situation. So here's the whole whole uh, transition program. It's um, it's the six steps, and it's about one year. And because we are not a not a center like uh, Judith, you told about your training programs. It's um, there's a, a lot of similarities, but because we are an NGO and we work together with uh, with the different municipalities, and we don't have any place where people could move or could uh, come to the school, then we go there where people are. And we have a little bit. Um, it is the lighter version of yours. So in the in the first point in the in the mapping, we um, try to find out what's the what's the situation in the in the municipality, for example. It can start uh, so that the family um, calls us or sends a message that they they need some help with the with their youngster, and then we start to find out that is there some other families who could need help and what does the municipality think about this kind of this kind of training process and then we we start start if, if we think that there is some some other other persons too then we make a local plan with the families and with the with the local stakeholders so what the, how, how do we start and how many how many people could come into this group and uh, and things like that what are the main main topics that the, because it, it really varies from the different, different uh, areas in Finland that what are the topics that people are talking about. Some, someone are talking about the studies, some people are worried about the employment, that they feel that there, there isn't any, any workplaces for them and things like that. Then the step three is uh, getting together and in this first meeting we really sit down and, and talk with each other, with, uh, with the young people, with the family members and all the, all the others and uh, and after that, we make the individual goals. And the individual goals are made for everyone, for all the, all the young people. They made their own goals. And of course, the municipality can make some, some own goals for their um, organizing or things like that. But all the goals are, are really individual for all the youngsters. And also some family members can make their own goals for the parents, for example. And then we have a different kind of team meetings. In those meetings, we, uh, we try to find out uh, how we can reach, reach the, the goals. We talk about uh, quite uh, practical things, for example, this housing and studying and, and how, uh, what does it mean when you move, move away from home and you have to take care of your own things, but also those emotions with the, with the young people and with the family members. And it's really, really important. And then the final step after after one year working together, then we have always the individual plans for all, all the all the participants to, to their individual life and they really know quite practicality what what's what's the next step, how how to start from this. And people say that it's really uh, really easy to start to live after after this kind of training program. As an organization, as a KVPS, our next. I don't know if this was for me or was it just. A... No, I think someone's trying, okay. trying to meet them. Yes, but this is the last slide, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but our next step is uh, that. Hey, Matur, I'll just mute everybody and then I'll unmute you. Okay. Okay, off we go. Okay, thank you, Rachel. Thank you.
So now we have a um, few years we have piloted this training program and we have uh, developed it. And now the next steps are that uh, we think that at the, at the moment we are ready to uh, document. That's the one thing that we have done a lot. We have documented the process and maybe we are able to scale and replicate the transition training model in Finland. And of course, we hope that we can disseminate it also in other European countries. And then uh, test and test and test and try to find out which are the, the main points of the, of the program and what we have to develop more. And we also, I have to say that we also get the, um, get the, the prize the last uh, spring from the zero. If you know, then that's, that was our first, first dissemination session for this, this on the verge of the adulthood training process. So we are really, really into uh, making cooperation with all the European countries with this. But thank you. I hope you got, <laughs> got the idea of the training process. It's not so easy to, to take a talk when you, you can't see anyone. And, <laughs> and to know that this is everything is okay but, but if you have something to ask please don't don't hesitate but thank you thank you very much and yeah we have to say congratulations to kvps for their zero project uh, award for this uh, this practice please feel free to submit your questions um and in the meantime it looks like you have a, a colleague who's been posting some of the uh the materials that you've been talking about in the chat so people can go to the chat to see that uh, so I have one question coming in. Um, do you help support? Do you help to support individuals who exhibit? I think it's maybe supposed to be uh, to exhibit behaviour of concern, find their way to employment. So yeah. is it? It's for other people. Yeah, if I understand right, yeah, and it's also um, uh, it's also a challenge for for us of course but um, in our our transition programs we have um, many many different kind of persons with uh, different kind of need of support so also also those and i think that um, it's um, mainly the persons who have the problems with the, with the challenging behavior they have also the most need of support in this this moment in their life because they are really like a lost in their lives of what, what are the opportunities for them and how to how to find something something to do after the school and and yes yeah. mm -hmm. it's really um like i said that we we make a different um, training programs in the in the different uh, areas of finland so it really depends on the participants what what's it, it like they are really different from each others it, even the structure is always the same we use different tools and uh, and we try to find out the best ways supporting the persons mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. in the training. So I have another question. Um, do you have it that at any point a youngster wants to stop during the program and how easy it for them to restart the program if they do stop? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, as I said, uh, this is quite, um, quite a so-called light <laughs> training program because they, they don't um, they don't move to any anywhere or they it's not like everyday meetings so they really can do what they want to do. There's also some, um, some persons who need an individual program. So we have also done, done that kind of processes where, where people are not involved in the, in the group, but they are just a, as an individual. We have made all these things with them. So it's also possible if people want to stop and then start again, or, or they really can't, uh, for example, those, those people um, in the spectrum of autism who can't be in the groups they, they can get the same, mm -hmm. same process, mm -hmm. the individualized. And what sort of skills do your trainers have? Um, what skills do you uh, train them in? Or do you need them to have to be able to support in this, this program? No, I didn't get it. Sorry, I saw it. Uh, so what sort of training skills specifically do you um, want your trainers to be able to have to be able to support uh, the persons in your program in this transition? Mm -hmm. We um a different different kind. We don't have so strict. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay. yes, we don't. Yeah, we don't yeah. have so strict. Um, yeah. For example, some diagnosis or anything like that. Yeah. So it's okay. it's really the need need of the training process is is the main point. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course, when we make the group, we try to find out the the people who uh, can work together, and that's mm -hmm. that's maybe mm -hmm. maybe more 
meaning, meaningful. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. Can you give an example of an individual plan or a plan by a local actor? I don't know if that's a bit too specific to be able to give mm. much example now. Um, I can um, give some of, I have to say that I am not so hands full in this, this program, so I really have to think <laughs> what, what can be a, a good example, but um, quite normal is that, um, that it starts, uh, starts with the idea that I, I, I can't do anything, there's nothing for me in the, in the future, there isn't any schools that I can, I can get in the, or there isn't any, any, um, any workplaces for me, and then when people find out their strengths, we, when we find out that what are really the, the things that, that, that they are interesting, interested, they really find out what to do. And for example, there is some, um, some artists, artists, who uh, can can really at the moment make it arts as a as a job at the moment and um, and of course quite a, quite many people who have uh, moved moved from the family homes to the to the group homes or or the individual flats and uh, and found um, found the jobs but we use the the PCP tools the path and that's really really good tool in this this kind of mm -hmm. process. And what's the response of the employer to uh, working with you and the, the people that they employ through this program? Are they happy with, with the cooperation that you have? Do you think they're more open to employing persons with disabilities uh, more generally now because of the program? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, the program is a, it's a one year program and, uh, and our role, even that it's quite a, quite a big role because we are organizing it, it's not so, um, so big after that that process, mm -hmm. and uh, and the people who are involved in the trainings, they the our role is to find out the people who can support them after the training mm -hmm. training process, and that's I think that we have managed to to find out that quite well, and mm -hmm. people are, are really happy happy for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you talk about wanting to scale it up and replicating it in Finland and mm -hmm. further. What do people do if they'd be interested in in sort of upscaling your practice in mm -hmm. the country? Yes, I think the, mm -hmm, yes, I think the tools and the, the structure and the way, way to, do, to do is, it's the, it's the one thing that people want to, want to replicate. And um, because we get the, we have a little bit different kind of foundation because in Finland we have this center for, for the foundation for the social and welfare services. So we get our, our money for these training programs from there. So it's everything is at the moment it's free for the for the municipalities and for the participants. So so in the future we are thinking that is there some I, I think that we are, we are going to have some changes also in Finland in, in this founding. So we have to think about is this some process that we can maybe sell to the municipalities or you know, that kind of ideas. Do we have any other questions? I would say that uh, someone, um, as you said, Rachel, put it, uh, this is how I manage. It's, a, it's found from the, mm -hmm. from the kvps.fi. And at the moment we have the new website and uh, I'm sorry to say that it, it just launched last week and all the English materials, it's not yet there. <laughs> so <laughs> please be, <laughs> I think that this one is, but there's also some other English materials coming soon, but, but we are now in the, in this transition program also with our website so, <laughs> so let's, let's wait for yeah i'll share the link again and then yeah, hopefully and yeah. um, by the time we share the powerpoints and things maybe yeah. the, the, the english slides will be uh, a bit more up and running yeah because so, this is found from the finnish <laughs> finnish side but also <laughs> all the materials in english comes in the english okay english. are there any final questions i think there's also some questions for the Judith, if i didn't yeah um, yeah, we can send the presentations to mail, just a practical answer to that question there. Uh, yeah, if you have any other questions for, for either of the, the speakers, please feel free to just put them in the chat. I'll just give it a few minutes. Um, maybe if not, Ilaria, we did have someone taking a note of the key messages. Yes, exactly. And I was actually writing them down in the chat, but it would be easier to just tell them to everyone. 
Um, so I will just contextualize very quickly uh, the importance of this workshop, which, uh, as Rachel said, um, having a job is part of our identity. Uh, it's not just about earning money and everyone deserves to have that part uh, to their identity to themselves. Um, I will start with uh, Judith's presentation of the Le Pont Adult Training Center. Uh, she immediately identified uh, the two main difficulties that the center faces, in particular the, um, the location, which is the south of Catalonia, uh, a rural area, uh, where people, uh, where are more people that are at risk of being excluded in um, job selection processes. Uh, for example, over 60% of people over 16 don't have secondary education. Um, Therefore, uh, the center provides uh, support to youngsters aged from 16 to 24 during this transition between uh, education and employment uh, to youngsters bo both with and without disabilities, um, but either way who come from difficult backgrounds. Um, there is a multifaceted approach thanks to the presence of uh, tutors and teachers and uh, the, um, the support is personalized uh, for each user. Uh, the process is the same for everyone. There is a tutor that is assigned at the very beginning um, after, uh, to, every, to every user. After this, the tutor and the user start working together to enhance the skills and also to realize what are the desires of the user. Um, then they, they create and present a professional project that will be followed throughout. After this, the final step is the implementation uh, that, is, um, that consists in training actions uh, for each of the users. And uh, when the objectives are met, the tutors and uh, Lopont in general act as references between uh, the employers and the user. In the case of uh, users with disabilities, the process is exactly the same. The only difference is that there is also a diversity commission that just provides overall more support and they also work on um, emotional education of the user. Um, then uh, Judith listed as uh, the key to success of Lopont the peer-to-peer -peer approach uh, that enhances inclusion and also using local resources and uh, a good and big network of partners, for example, of the uh, local organizations and uh, the government of Catalonia. Uh, then I'm going on to Katri's presentation. Uh, she works at K KVPS in Finland. Um, right now they are working on a project called On the Verge of Adulthood. Um, it's a project that involves both the users, so the youngsters and the families in every single step of, of it. Um, and this project is aimed at youngsters who are starting to think about what they're going to do after school. Um, but not only strictly, strictly related to, to their job, but also to just every aspect of their future, including, for example, housing. Uh, the project lasts one year and is made of six steps and is addressed to uh, youngsters aged from 13 to 25. Uh, the approach is holistic, which was underlined by, by, Katri's multiple ta by Katri multiple times. Uh, because it's very important, as I said, um, the users are supported not only during the transition uh, to, towards having an employment, but also uh, for housing opportunities or independent living, which is a hot topic at that age, we can say. Um, the keys to success that Katri identified are also very similar to Judith's. Um, for example, the, uh, the presence of coordinators that help the users piece every piece of the puzzle together. Uh, they also have a network of partners that work all together, a network of uh, stakeholders. Um, the, the skills and the dreams of the users are always taken into account. Um, the approach is also person-centered and uh, the peer-to-peer -peer support for both users and families is also a very important point. Um, then also the, the creation of toolkits also for both the users and the families. Uh, the, six pro the six steps uh, of the process that I mentioned uh, are the mapping, uh, which is the uh, contextualization of the situation, also geographically speaking, 
uh, then we have a local plan so how to start uh, how to start this uh, this project getting together so discussing everything with all the stakeholders involved setting the individual goals then there are team uh, theme meetings uh, how to reach these goals and then the final step is um, really giving the practicalities on how to to achieve all the goals that were set and uh, finally after this there are also case studies that uh, analyze the long-term impact of uh, of this project thank you very much thank you for the very comprehensive uh, roundup of the workshop um, and thank you everyone for joining us had very well behaved uh, participants for this workshop so it's made it a lot easier thank you very much so, as I've said, the presentations of um, both the speakers will be sent to you, everybody, via email. Um, I think we'll also make it available on the app. Um, the workshops that have also been taking part in these session, this session have been recorded, and so they'll also become available on our YouTube in the coming weeks. Um, they'll also be indicated to you in a, a mail to all participants after this conference. Um, that's it for us for today, for our conference. Thank you again for joining us. We hope to see you back tomorrow for day two, where we have our panel session uh, from 10 to 11.30. Um, the link that you use to access this has, um, is sent to you once you register for our conference. It's the same link that you used this morning to access the panel session. Um, and also tomorrow's workshops will be held at different times. 11.45 to 12.45 and here we'll be uh, looking at some of the winners and the runners-up of our employment award. Um, the links to these uh, workshops will be sent to you in a PowerPoint tonight, uh, in a PowerPoint, in an email tonight. Um, they'll also be shared on our conference app and in the chat bar of um, our web uh, of our panel discussion tomorrow morning. If you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact me or anybody else of the ESB team. And don't forget to check your spam folder for the email because sometimes it's all in there. So if you haven't received it yet, um, just check there and make sure you have it. So that's all for me for now. Thank you very much, everybody. And thank you very much to our speakers.